Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. My name is Bahamut, and we have got the members of Skiggly's Wigglies on the left-hand side, and we got Party Time on the right. This is going to be a Division B East matchup, and if you're wondering how we got to Braxis hold out of out of out of all the maps we could have gotten to, let me let me go ahead and update you on said information. We went ahead and had the members of Skiggly Wigglies, actually, excuse me, Party Time won the coin flipped, opting for first pick priority for game number one. Cursed Hollow and Towers of Doom were banned out by them. Infernal Shrines and Alterac Pass were banned out by the members of Skiggly Wigglies. And so we're gonna be having Braxis Holdout as the map choice because they literally said, hey, yeah, we want to go ahead and uh, play the map that no one else gets to play on. So let's go ahead and take us to Braxis for game number one. And so it looks like that is going to be exactly it. Let's go ahead and get back into our draft and find out what we're going to be having here for our... Sorry, I'm just updating stream title stuff here. For our first pick, so we have a Ariel Alarak ban on the left-hand side. We have a Rexar and Deathwing on the right. ECC will be the first pick coming out from party time, and then we're going to have a Greymane Joe on the left-hand side. Greymane does dive in very well. I would typically you see something to pair into that, something like an Anubrex, something like a Diablo as well, but Joanna holds points very well in a control point-based map that she's going to work out very well. ETC is going to be able to try and push people around. Seems like they're going to play into the more of a control comp position on the side of party time with the Stukov ETCs. A lot of control around the points. Jane is going to be able to burst into there. Maybe they'll be looking for a Rainer as their draft progresses, but we do have another ban phase popping up in just a second. I just need to respond to someone really quickly. Also, hello to everyone in chat. Day, how are you doing? Thanks for coming by. Zell, it's good to see you, my friend. Sorry for the delay on saying hello. Just everything is happening at one time. Um... All right, right now, um, what I'm trying to do is just, I'm trying to secure us an extra match for the night. Uh, I usually try and at least cast two best of threes. So what I'm doing is I'm reaching out to teams to say like, hey, do you mind waiting potentially half an hour to uh, to be casted? So let me just reach out once again to, um, to another team. And I know we should be talking about draft, but I just want to at least get as much information as possible in front of you all. So let's go ahead, let's ask, um, it's uh, CT. On uh, Mara Drift versus at Please Clap. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to get us another game here. We got that, that's all good. Looks like our lobby DC'd for some reason. Happy New Year, what's up? What's up, Geo dude? Um, Oh, Bishop Miss DC. Okay. Sorry, I'm doing too many things at once. But Geo Dude, how are you doing? Thanks for coming by. All right. We're going to push the button anyways. Let's do the whole thing over again. Poor Deathwing always getting banned. Exactly. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. My name is Bahama. We're, we, had, we had to restart the lobby, so we're going to restart the whole thing. Welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. My name is Bahama. As I said, Skiggly Wigglies will be on our left-hand side. We got party time on the right. This is going to be a Division B East matchup. We've already had a DC from the lobby, so they're currently going through everything. This is just for the YouTube video to make it a little bit easier to edit. We're going to jump over to the maps real quickly. The home team this evening is going to be Skiggly Wigglies losing the coin flip. The opposing side, party time, opted for first pick priority. Cursed Hollow and Towers of Doom were banned up by them, Infernal Shrines and Alterac Pass banned up by the members of Skiggly Wigglies as they have decided to take us to Brax's holdout for game number one as it's not banned out and for once the team is actually excited to be playing on it. So there's the Rainer as we talked about earlier uh, to be banned out. Actually we'll probably keep all of that so that way you can watch all of it twice because there was a little bit of information in there. But so far control composition coming out from the members of Party Time. We have Skiggly Wigglies on the left hand side with the Greymane Joanna. So as I was saying beforehand before we had the DC, Greymane and Joanna pair pretty well together, especially on a, on a, on a map 
like this. Something like an Anubrek or a Diablo might pair a little bit better if they are trying to play aggre aggressive into this enemy team. But I think they just want that Joanna to be able to lock down and secure control over the point. Greymane just to be able to dive into the back lane to potentially get onto the Jaina. They also grab some extra push power on top of that with a Sylvanas as well. And then a Brightwing to be healing up. And I, I gotta say, that skin is blocked by my chair, so it's not going to be seen. But it was very cute. It's the Deathwing skin. Uh, we were noting before as well that the Jaina with the Stukov ETC would have paired well into the Rainer, so that's why you're having that ban out from Skilly Wiggly. It's very, very strong coming out from them. Miss Windup Bird, how are you doing? Thanks for coming by. You left to get your ramen and you cursed the entire draft. Dear Lord, it must be some very good ramen. Have the teams always been allowed to ban out two maps each, or is that new? Um, it was added in in like season four of NGS. Like it was a while ago. It's it's been around for quite some time. Um, to have two map bans, probably I think season four, season four or five is when it started. But uh, Mayev and Liork will round out the draft on the right hand side. So Liork for the solo lane, Mayev for some extra damage. Uh, they've got some decent lockdown slows and bursts coming out from the members of Party Time on the left hand side. They are going to need a solo lane to go into said Liork. Malfeel wouldn't be horrible. You could play into uh, Urella if you really wanted to, but she also has a little bit of a higher health pool, so looks like we are going to be going ahead and having a Thrall to round that out. So a little bit more poke into the Leoric. You also have a little bit of a setup with the um, Sundering. Also, you have some boss control and point control with that, or you could even go into Earthquake. You can pick up Earth and Shields at level 20 to get your friendly members some, uh, some shielding as well. But we'll see how this uh, all unfolds as we go ahead and get on in to game number one here. Well, at least we're going to start loading into it. But I got to say, for our first draft, I think that's really, really uh, strong right there. All shall burn beneath the shadow of her tiny, adorable wings. Exactly. Now, let me look really quickly. Um, OK, so the player says that they're interested, but unfortunately, we have to wait and find out. I'm just I have like this is this is the notebook that I I've, I've been casting with this thing forever. Um, let's see. Is this NGS? I think this is NGS. Yeah. So back in 2018, in 311 2018, there was only one. Oh my God! This isn't the old Domination League. That's why I was just like, why is there only one map pick? It's it's because yeah, like it was a Domination. It was only best of twos for the longest time. Um, Snowbike Mike, thank you so much for the tier one subscription, dude. Thanks for coming by. I got to catch a, I got to catch a little bit of um of your uh, your COD event on Sunday. That was really, really cool. Thanks for coming by, bud. I hope you have a wonderful night. But we are here, we are, are in game number one. Let's go ahead and load on into it and see what we get here. On the left-hand side, we got the members of Skiggly Wigglies. We're going to be seeing uh, Red Rook Lord on the Thrall. Going to be having Brightwing actually going to be in the Hall of Storms. This Mommy Milky is going to be on that one. Uh, Skig will be on the Sylvanas. We got Mosher on the Grey Man and Jacko Pop on the Joanna. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Party Time. We're going to be seeing Schumann going to be on the... Leork, we got ETC on Chess Clue. We're going to be seeing Bishop Mist on the Maiev. Poke Flute going to be on that Stukov and EKB. Rounds out the draft on the Jaina. Let's go ahead and check out our level one talents and see what our initial engagement looks like. ETC going to be hanging out in this upper portion over here. Let's actually show the vision really quickly so that at least we can get an idea of how they're going to be setting up. Because I saw ETC lingering, lingering back. I think they're considering maybe jumping in a top lane. But they are going to be showing. <laughs> a couple members are going to be showing right there for a couple of seconds. And they're going to be trying to play around this still. ETC is going to be that main set up for them and then Jaina with some bursts and then you also have the lurking arm from the Stukov but no one's going to be diving out just yet and this is just going to be a little bit of a back and forth as we do get into our first wave and also ETC going into proc rocket level 1 so making sure they're picking up those regeneration globes same thing with Jaina with the fingers of frost at level 1 going to be picking up those she needs the 20 of them to be able to get the 10% uh, damage increase after that and you also get some mana uh, mana oh my god Mono regeneration gain from that. Yo, shot. How's it going, bud? Thanks for coming by. Move. How you doing, friend? Blonde Duchess. Good to see you. Everyone's here. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking out some wonderful games. We're gonna, we're trying to find you a second best of three best of three series of the evening. Uh, our original Division A matchup did end up canceling at the last second. There was a forfeit due to uh, college students needing to go to class and things like that. Who goes to class? Uh, you know, it's 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 understandable. So we're we're reaching out to teams right now. Um, we got like there's I asked a heroic team. They said no, they can't. It's past their bedtime. Uh, so we're asking Division C to see if they uh, have any openings as well. But right now we got a good best of three in front of you for this Division B East matchup. Going to be having the bottom lane control beacon held over so far in favor for the members of uh, <laughs> Skiggly Wiggly. Is ETC going to be trying to set up in this back lane looking for Skig right there? It's going to be a lurking or excuse me an Umbra bind from Bishop Miss. They actually end up finding the thrall kill in top lane. 
York will be able to dominate that lane. So that will be First Blood going over to the members of Party Time. And they're also going to be able to grab this bottom lane control beacon as well. And so this will be Charge going up in their favor. They're going to be building up a Zerg wave for bottom lane, as we can see down over here. This is going to be slowly filling up as that, that charge goes up further. But the more interesting factor is going to be the actual fights taking place and the slow push pressure they're put, putting into this bottom lane. I actually really got to say, I love the how aggressive they're playing this, especially going up against the Sylvanas. Really good on Bobine coming out from Maiev to be able to find the kill. They get the counter kill onto ETC, but they're going to chase this out. Hushal being spread from that Sukov, making sure no one's getting too low, as this will be Skig diving back onto the point over here. For all is back up into top lane, going to be able to try and force this uh, Lee Orc back a little bit, but the early game experience has yielded them that level four, so you can just see now they're just getting it, so Lee Orc was threatening a little bit further, and they're not even trying to clear the wave, they're actually just trying to be a, th a, a force into Thrall and not even let them step up to potentially even get their level one stacks on Echoed Corruption. You trying to fight Bahama Gaming? I mean... Not you. I still think you. I still think you'd win. <laughs> well, we'll find out. I guess BlizzCon 2020, maybe we'll find out. But that's going to be a great Umber Bind just to kind of disrupt things as ETC does need to get out of there. Bottom lane will be held over by the members of Sk Skiggly Wigglies. That's I don't know why that one always uh, trips me up. But uh, since it's going to be kind of you know held in bottom to our blue and held in top to our red, no one's going to be able to have charge. But this is still the Orc holding the top lane charge. And they're also gonna be holding the the control in this top lane. Typically, they're like this is when when people talk about winning a lane, this is definitely a good visual indication of winning a lane. Thrall's constantly playing back and not able to step up into the lane, not even in into their front gate. That you know, you just saw Leork stepping into the front gate, not even taking tower shots, because obviously there's a minion wave, and they're just playing that really, really well and also really aggressive. So it's just kind of it's it's a burden to be at that point. They might need a rotation from maybe the Sylvanas or the Grey Main to uh, really pressure that Leork. But right now, this is going to be Leork clearing top lane, and that's not going to be a hard time for them. But bottom lane is going to be having a huge Zerg wave coming in. They've also got that Jaina to be able to dump some snow. ETC finds a wonderful power slide. Going to be trying to zone some members back, but there is going to be the Polymorph from Brightwing to slow them down. Does have to cycle back out to get some healing from Stukov. Gets that Pushal spread around, and now... The members of our red team are going to be stepping up into the front gate, and they'll be able to take this down. The question is, are they going to be able to take the fort? Top lane still has the Leoric playing, playing that a little bit slower. It seems like one of the Ultralists might be giving them a bit of a, a rough go there, as there was an, um, or excuse me, a condemn from the Joanna to be able to slow them by. Slow them. Down. I thought I saw an Umbral bind because I saw the uh, a couple of members getting pulled together, but I was like, wait a minute, not not the same kind of pull animation. Seven talent here though has been achieved by the members of party time and they're they're looking to threaten with this as well they've still got the two guardians that are attacking from range and these siege very very well it's actually difficult for for the tower to, to kill it because well it doesn't actually hit the range of the tower so you actually have to step up and kill it another umber buying coming out from bishop mist as they did go also into bonds of justice at level one looking for those 10 stacks on that one and they are going to be only two out of the 10 also going to be going into pin down at level four not too often we see Mayavs going for that one just to, because of how difficult it is to to finish that out but but on the on the counterpoint that I always make of myself, when you do have four members stacking up around a beacon like this, a fan of knives isn't too far off, isn't too hard to to potentially get onto four enemy heroes. Is uh, Maev? Yes, he's he's a little bit worried right there. Just going to be using the bolt of the ward and blinks away, making sure they're right out of there. Announcement: We will stream the Bahama versus Shot Fight at BlizzCon 2020. I'm up for it. Uh, it'll be it'll be just after we do the ad hoc uh, Heroes of the Storm 2020 community uh, tournament that that we're gonna make up on the spot and make it work somehow. <laughs> that was actually the original plan for the meetup this year, but it just it was just way too much. We were just like, you know what? Let's just all meet up and play games together. Mosher so very low, doesn't get picked off. We do have this night lo nice looking arm from Poke Flute. They have split Skig off from the friendly team, but it looks like they're gonna be able to force them uh, to use the haunting wave to get the aggressive side of that. Sorry, I was just looking at minimap and also watching this top lane as Schumann is just, and this is what I'm talking about, like winning a lane being this aggressive right now. They almost actually got the kill, but Red uh, Red Rook Lord does have their passive ability, so they could pop Wind Fury and get that, um, get that Frost Wolf Resilient stack to actually proc so they get extra healing from that one. Actually, I'm, it's not full, is it Frost Wolf Resilience? Let's find out together, team. Yes. So essentially when you get multiple stacks of that, you get a little bit of healing. Actually, 305 healing to be uh, specific. So uh, if you hit an enemy hero with your with your with the Maelstorm, or excuse me, with the Wind Fury, 
Maelstrom is one of the talents, but if you're able to hit them a bunch of times, you can proc it that way. You can also proc it with the Feral Spirit or even the Chain Lightning. So just a lot of good tools for Thrall's own self-sustain. That's why you see him in this bruisery top lane role. Um, but the same thing for Leoric. They've got a great self-sustain themselves, as you can see them managing that fairly well. We also do have the Jaina at 17 out of the 20 stacks on the Fingers of Frost. ETC did finish out the proc rack, which does give healing out to the friendly members around them. So you get, you know, it's just, it's extra sustain in some of these fights. The other thing to note too is we are going to be having 10 talent tiers popping up in favor for the members of party time. Oh, hold on. That's going to be Skid getting pulled in. Oh, they actually interrupt the ha uh, haunting wave. You actually saw it go over there, but they had the Umbra Bind just in time, and that interrupt the ability for them to hit E again, and they couldn't uh, blink to where the haunting wave was. Peeking into top lane really quickly. This is... Oh, wait. It's March of the Black King, and it's off cooldown. I was wondering if Shun was going to try and bait him in and just March of the Black King on top of him, but not going to be the case, as this is Bishop Miss chasing out a little bit. Going to be using, using the Vault of... Excuse me. The Spirit of Vengeance to get over that wall and, and engage with the friendly team a little bit more aggressive. Another Condemned going to be pulling a couple members in. Um, I didn't think the Joanna wanted to subdue, but I didn't check. Oh, we're finally doing that? I, I hope. I mean, I'd like to try and do it this year, but it just it takes planning ahead of time. And we all know how that goes in the esports world. So we're going to RPG Thrall, classic uh, Trap Queen build. March? Actually, you know what? This is... I, I see a lot of March games. I will be honest, though. With a Mosh Pit and a Ring of Frost potential, well... You know, and Tomb looks really good. Also, with maybe a Warden's Cage as well. That's going to be Ring of Frost. There's a Blessed Shield. There's the Warden's Cage you're seeing pulling people in right there. A huge Zerg Wave is still pushing on through top lane. You heard Curse Bullet go out. The Brightwing is going to be picked off. They did go into Blink Heal, so no Emerald Wind to control these fights, as this will be the continued Zerg Wave pushing up through top lane. This is going to be the front gate going down. I think they might be able to just get the front gate. After that, I think they're going to have to back off. Um, er, Thrall did go into Sunder as well, so that does give them an opportunity to kind of control the fight, maybe split the enemy team. But the big factor with that one is going to be the angle at which you use it. Just throwing the Sunder out willy-nilly is not going to help much if you if you can kind of find that that perpendicular line against the enemy team. So currently they're all traveling from, from left to right on the screen. So if you're able to get you below them and you go kind of north to south with that Sundering to split the enemy team, it's a really good way for then your friendly team to capitalize because, well, usually you're pushing majority of the team to one side and then uh, one to two members to towards your friendly team on the left, and that allows in the chase for you to get that. So the angling from the Sundering is going to be important from the Thrall. Here, they could have just thrown it out and definitely split the team just to try and step up onto the point. Unfortunately, not able to get into the lane quick enough, as this is going to be the top lane for our... Uh... I'm trying to remember, is it is it Thor? What is the actual unit name? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Is Everything is happening actually over here. Um, it's the Terran Ar Archangel, that's what it is. Oh my god, dear lord. Leork will be going down right there, so they will be able to find themselves a kill. This is our Archangel on top lane. It should be cleared out. Gonna get a little bit of damage onto the keep, but I don't think it's gonna be anything where they have to really worry about it potentially going down to maybe like a backdoor or anything like that. Schumann also gonna be cheating death right now. As you can see, their death timer is gonna be a little bit faster than everyone else's. Actually, the only one you can reference is ETC, as they will be back up as well. I miss competition so much. I love, uh, please. If, if. April Pog Champ? March, April. I'm confused. What? What are we talking about months for? Uh. Yeah, no. That, that'd be really, really fun. I think what ha ends up happening is because there's usually like. There's X stations, but I think it's in it's in multiples of like 10 because I think it's like five stations go up against the uh, these other five stations constantly. So like if you wanted to have 5v5s, you could potentially set it up that way. So we, we could we we I think we would just have to literally like play a game and then put everyone back through the line and then play a game, then put everyone back through the line. So uh, we'll have to figure something out. I, I'll have to go down there on like day one and, and see what the setup is and then go from there. But I, it'd be really, really fun just to do like an ad hoc, like bring just a um, like a 24 by 36, like uh, construction sheet, like a thick piece of paper and then just make a bracket out on that and just be done with it. I miss when Shadow Sock was only self buff. Oh my god, that was a while ago. <sighs> Do you remember when Possession was a heroic? I think OSD is playing Division S. I don't know though. Uh, OSD, I think, is playing Division S. I, I don't remember. There's so many divisions at this point that I, I 
I can't keep track of half the stuff. I just see teams. I'm just like, yes, I know you. <laughs> I'll be casting Divisionist uh, next week. Uh, Gravesville will have uh, all the Divisionists this week for you if you want to find that. It'll be over on his channel. That's going to be an ETC mosh, but that will be interrupted by the... Uh, Oh my god, the Bless Shield from the Joanna, but everyone's currently being shredded by the slows from the Leoric, but also the burst d damage from the Jane. This is going to be Masha in a bit of a rough spot as they will get picked off as well. All five members going down in our engagement here as Zerg Wave Charge is coming out in favor for the members of Party Time. They've also got a camp that was pushing, uh, still is pushing top lane, just ends right there. So that you saw the uh, negative 20 armor on the keep, and Shuma was trying to capitalize on that uh, damage buff that they would have been able to apply, but they're going to be going for at least a keep here. This will be Zerg Wave in bottom lane, so they could make the rotation to bottom or yeah they're they're gonna go ahead and do that exactly they're gonna regroup and push through bottom lane they've also got 16 talent here as well so that's gonna be a major factor for them as let's we'll cycle through some of the other numbers get an idea of what those look like as we haven't peeked at those for a little bit oh day thank you so much for gifting a sub to ektar thank you thank you thank you that phase when i don't know if my team is playing or not that's true that's true shot i'm sure i'm sure i could actually i could let you know i actually have the entire um schedule uh, in a in a message from from Wedge, but that's going to be a lot of damage on the Joanna's Jackal Pop is trying to make their way out of here, but they're currently being cornered by the ETC and friends. They find that kill down there as this will be the Zerg Wave pushing on in through bottom lane. Schumann and the rest are going to be looking fairly healthy as they actually Wraith walk forward. Going to be trying to get that damage mitigation. Ooh, this is a lot of damage on the mommies. And, oh, mommy is going to be pulled in as well with the Umbral Bind. Bishop Miss looking for one more fan of knives. They're going to try and pull him towards these two towers, and it's not going to be enough as this is going to be Ring of Frost for the zone potential, but the Zerg Wave is on core, and that is going to be game number one going over to the members of Party Time. GG. Well played. Orbs. If you're an AGDQ fan. Hmm. I haven't been on Twitch in a while. What are these uh, bubbles to collect now? The experience. Basically, visualization of the experience. Yes, so... Um, at BlizzCon 2019, they announced what they're every season they're going to be doing something um, for the Nexus anomalies, and it's 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 changes to the game that are going to be based off of you know the player feedback. So one of the major factors when this first came out was that you know it'd be cool if last hitting the minion means that you no longer need to pick up the 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 experience globe, and that actually became a factor in this game. And they actually made the update. They, they patched it in. Also, hold on really quickly. Sorry, I'm just looking through all these stats. Can we talk about how ETC had a perfect 30,000 siege damage? I know I've got fish brain right now and I'm jumping all over the place, but that just, sorry, I saw that. Either way, the Nexus Anomalies is something they're going to be introducing every single season. So they're going to introduce a new concept or a change to the game. And whether it's good, they're going to keep it in. If it's bad, they're going to remove it. And the the, the outlier for me here is, is how quickly... Like if something comes into the game and it's it's received completely negative by the community and it's been like, let's say two to three weeks or two to four weeks. Do you think they'll try and keep it in for a little bit longer, make changes to it or just fully remove it? Because that's the big question I have. Cause seasons, uh, I believe, are essentially quarterly for Heroes of the Storm. I believe they actually run every three -ish to four months. So um, it's just one of those things. I'm, I'm curious to see what the other ones are. Me personally, I actually like the experience globe change. I think it's cool. Um, I think it's an, it's a, it's a good visual, visualization. Uh, and I think for newer players that come to the game, it's even better as well. But I personally just like to be able to see the experience and how it comes in. Like, I, I think it's a cool uh, visualization tool. Sorry, I need to, mo I need to message Mosher. Uh, first pick or map pick. Not gonna lie, can't wait for them to remove XP orbs. Really? You think you think well so what's what's your argument against it, Shot? Oh, he mean he means to redeem points for Twitch. I I like how I went through an entire spiel about experience globes, and it's actually just um the you're subjectively wrong. I mean, no, you that's it's the truth. I mean, I'm going to see it differently than you. You play the game in a completely different fashion than I do. I've talked to I've talked to people who are actually talented at this game, and it is wild to me the things that they consider in a game which you would never. Um, so I'm just I'm messaging players and stuff like really quickly just to figure out stuff. Um, I wish the experience calls were purely a visualization of the old experience system. That'd be interesting to see. 
When they came out, it wasn't great, but the changes lasting them was a lot more. I, I agree, Zelda. That, that does make it better. Uh, okay, we got a map. So it's gonna be that. That's gonna be that. Okay. XPRs remove Abatha from the game. Yeah, I guess in a sense. As, as, here's the thing, though. As, as I said, at 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 what player are you putting that? Because like me personally, at the level that I play, I can still play Abathur, and he's he's in game and he's fine. But as that that's what I keep saying. Like you're going to see the game differently than me. Like when a, remember does ever remember when a new was banned out for the longest time? Like it, it was, it was like, it was honest to God, like six months ago and a new was so powerful and it was just, everyone was, was jumping on him. Everyone wanted to have a new and this and that at high tier play, he was almost unbeatable. Like if, if a new was on the enemy team, you're going to lose the game and we never see that anymore, but we also never saw it at low division play. So that's, that's the big factor that I always, I always consider in these situations is, is like, what division are you playing this? I'll agree that last thing the orbs made it bearable. I, I, I like it better because of that. Um, there's a lot of reasons. Let me pull up my notepad. Just just peep OG. It's just peep OG. That's all it is. <laughs> Chat saying Abathur's fine. I miss the new Brack being a big boy. Abathur definitely nerfed, but you can still do pretty much the same stuff. Monk's Blood, how you doing, bud? A new Brack was my boy. It was also like shot. Consider this too. Like, do you remember? Like, there was a there was a period where like I remember always talking to you or always overhearing that you were always saying that like Dia was overpowered. Dia was super 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 strong right now, and he didn't have changes for a long time. But it was only at that high tier play. Like at a lower tier play, you have to consider the fact that like and even a new Brack or Diablo, the skill shot setup, everything is going to be completely different because they're going to see the game differently. Like a, a, a master player Diablo is going to be just doing that simple geometry constantly in their head, whereas someone in bronze or silver or gold or maybe even platinum myself are going to be trying to find angles or just using things off cooldown because they're off cooldown so it's 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 just it's so hard to, to to say like when a patch comes through that like something's bad or good because there's i see so many different tiers of play that like it may be good for one tier but it might be bad for another and that's that's the hardest thing to kind of balance out in some of those situations sorry for my rant Diablo sucks. <laughs> the Lost Vikings got uh, hefty nerf too. The inability to save soak from bushes hurt them a lot. I I I will agree with that. I I don't know how I feel about the whole not being able to soak from bush. I think if anything, like if you're going to remove that from maybe make it an exception, like make it like make it so that a new Brack, not a new Brack, uh, Abathur and Lost Vikings, like at least those two heroes can soak from bushes. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's those two heroes and then maybe all stealth heroes because Zeratul has been played in the solo lane. Nova can be can sit in a bush and soak as well. Valyra can do the same thing. Granted, at the same time, you're also opening uh, avenues for people to, to just troll with that as well. But they're going to like trolls are going to troll or they're going to troll. Like look at Leoric back when he was released and how people would just stand under towers for the entire game and just have a, you know, 26 game death Leoric. I remember that and that's why I didn't play League for like a solid year. I, I just didn't like it. Too easy to kite and force Diablo to take bad engage. IDK, maybe it's because player decisions, uh, maybe because the player decision isn't. Player decision making isn't fantastic. It, it, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm um, sorry. Let me, teams are saying stuff. Get these teams a uh, which link? Ooh. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and uh, get on into our game number two. Let me make sure that everything's all set up on my end. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's go. Gotta love that <laughs> Leoric trait value. Oh yeah, gotta love it. Tomb of the Spider Queen. 
Welcome back everyone to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am Bahamut, your caster. On the left hand side we got Skiggly Wigglies and on the right is going to be party time up one in our first of hopefully two best of three series. We are going to be making ourselves, making our way into Tomb of the Spider Queen. If you're sitting at home wondering how we might have gotten to Tomb of the Spider Queen, it's alright, I got you covered friends. The home team this evening is going to be the members of I'm a Good Caster and I totally updated all the information in between games. Uh, the home team is going to be the members of party, or excuse me, Skiggly Wigglies. They lost the coin flip the members of party time one uh opting for first pick priority cursed hollow and towers of doom banned up by them and infernal shrines and altaric pass will be banned up by the members of skiggly wigglies braxis holdout was the first map chosen by skiggly wigglies and won by the members of party time so we are going to be having skiggly wigglies opting for first pick priority as they are the losing team meaning that party time has map pick priority and that is going to be tomb of the spider queen as our map number two let's go ahead and get back into the draft and see what we get here for our actual uh, draft here. Oh my god, Ta, how's it going? And look at that, you got that little bit badge. That little goatee bit badge. Kagiri made a bunch of bit badges for the for the channel, so like, I think it's like 0 to 100 is like a mustache, goatee is like 100 to something, and then it just gets, like, the beards get bigger and bigger, so um, I hope you all enjoy them. I personally loved everything that, that she showed me and made for it, so, and it actually reads really, really good. I was worried that I was just like, oh, is that gonna read? No, it, it, it reads pretty good. Uh, we do have an, uh, uh, excuse me, an Alarak and an ETC banned out on the left-hand side. We're gonna be having the mem we're gonna be having Ariel being banned out. She has made some waves as of recently due to the fact that her resurrection had some changes where she can self cast it and uh, that actually changed her completely she went from from popping up here and there on certain maps and, and having mild priority mild to high priority to literally being first pick first band material deathwing will be picked up on the side of uh, skiggly wigglies and they let this happen that's a nano boosted mal uh, cal oh, oh my god malfield before I can even say the words or even have the thought they knew what was happening before I even did what is your what's your thoughts on Schumann? That's my brother. Um, oh my God! Look at Day's little little uh, beard there. Uh, actually, I'll be honest. In game number one, they played Leoric and they absolutely like held that lane. Like I haven't seen anyone play a top lane as a Leoric that aggressive in a very long time. So it was just it was cool because typically solo laners they don't they don't really try and dominate the lane per se. They'll try and push up, force the waves a little bit, maybe rotate out, maybe rotate down to help out the friendly team, maybe grab a camp, but that was just straight aggression and force throughout that entire game number one from uh from Schumann. And it personally I I thought it was a great I thought it was great Leoric play. I thought it was really, really difficult for the Thrall to constantly find a footing in that in that top lane. And that's just that's just my blunt observation from it all. But uh, Junkrat will be banned out here on the right hand side. We got rid of the Sylvanas as well as I, I didn't really note. Uh, she does have a lot of good push pressure on a map like this as well. Party time, pick Lunara and win free. Cags is amazing. I agree, Ta. I agree. Res went from 50 to, yeah. Yeah, that's true, Ektar. That is true as well. Just that small factor. Uh, Grimane was going to be banned out here as well. They don't want to deal with a curse bullet. Uh, Leoric could be something they pick up here, but they've already got... I don't know, does, is Malfiel in the solo lane or is Malfiel in the four-member rotation between top and mid? Hmm. I also like the... Um, the Ana being picked up here for the Bite of Grenade just to mitigate some of Anduin's healing as well. Tychus is going to be grabbed. They're just going shred. They're just they're just going shred. Li Ming's going to be picked up as well. This is a very, I wouldn't say squishy. Li Ming can also be nano boosted on top of all of this as well. So either Malfield or Ana, or excuse me, Li Ming or Malfield to be nano boosted throughout this game. Um, last pick to come out from them, it actually could be a Leoric, realistically. Um, like you, you Leo with the group and then you Malfield solo lane. I don't know. I don't know, actually. Mm, I don't really like the Leor because they're final, but on the left-hand side, they do need wave clear currently between... Because uh, I'm assuming Deathwing should be in their solo lane, so there's an Akeltuzad and a Lunara for themselves. Wait, Lunara's insane here. Well, the members of uh, Skilly Wiggles are going to be taking it. <laughs> Murdered to round this out. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. The Leeming feels much. Mal feels in the solo. I don't know. I don't know. 
This kill to Zod scaling is going to be, I think, an outlier for me as well. Hmm. Hmm. Like Lunara killed the Zod coming out from the members of Skiggly Wigglies. Uh, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure. Honestly, chat, I'm not sure. It's, um, I think it's just burden of execution at this point. Actually, you know what? You know what I'm going to put it down to? I'm going to put it down to the Deathwing. If they're able to constantly dive the Deathwing and get and shred the death and, and kill it, that's going to be members of Skilly Wiggly struggling throughout this game. But if Deathwing doesn't get picked off and they have to make a lot of uh, rotations and if they're trying to make ganks and they just they start to miss on an experience, that might be the outliers. So we'll have to see as this game does progress. But uh, let's go ahead and get into game number two. Let's find out who is going to be taking this and if we make it to a game three. But Skiggly Wiggly is trying to take us to game three. Skig going to be on the Deathwing. We've got uh, Red Rook Lord on the Kel'Thuzad, Jacko Pop on the Anubrak. Masha going to be on the Lunara and Mommy Milky's on the Anduin. On the right hand side, we got the members of Party Time. We're going to be seeing Seely Man on the Ana. Uh, Key for You will be on the Li Ming. Chess Clue will be on the Murden. Bish Bishop Mist on the Tychus. And EKB going to be on that Malthiel. Let's go ahead and check out our level ones and check out what we get for our first engagement. The lockdown to keep people in Dragon Breath. Hmm. I mean, you can burrow charge with the Impale, so that's two stuns. Two stuns to keep them there. Kel'Thuzad's got chains to pull them back in. Anduin's got a chastise, so you, you could be looking, but I I don't think they're going to be playing specific. I, I personally wouldn't I, I wouldn't expect them to be playing around the f of just that factor right there. Chess Clue is going to be stepping up in this backline. I think just trying to throw off the potential uh, chains that were thrown off from Kel'Thuzad, making sure they're not going to be able to connect and get those extra stacks. And for anyone that is wondering, the stacks are going to be this Master of the Cold Dark. The big factor is the 75% spell power increase you get after 30 stacks. You get you get the Glacial Spike, which is something you can throw a chain on and pull an enemy member to, and that's typically where we see the combo come out from Kel'Thuzad post-10, is you get that chain, you pull a single member, you get the blow up onto the Glacial Spike, and then uh, the you, and then you also have the uh, Shadow Fissure underneath that. So it's just, it's you roll your, fa you roll your face across the keyboard, and you uh, destroy an enemy hero, typically something like a Li Ming on a Tychus, or maybe even a Malfeel, someone with a lower health pool, if you will, because we're currently seeing um, majority of the team is going to be somewhere in the roughly 2,000 to less hero pool. The only one that's really breaking that, excuse me, my apologies, is going to be Murden, nearing that 3,000. But obviously these heroes will scale over time. I mean, like Malheal down here is going to be a little bit over 2,000, but this Deathwing, I'm, I'm interested to see because they're actually playing super close to the gate. They don't want to step up into the Malheal too much. They all, they did go into on a Pale Horse. They're going to be picking up a lot of these, uh, this missing experience potential, in it, especially in mid lane during some of these engagements that are popping off between the top and mid. It's just all over the place right now with this with this two in the Spider Queen game. Malheal's uh, just, just trying to posture around the map and help out the friendly team whenever necessary. You can see Skig is, is res they're respecting the mouthfeel. They, they don't want to just sit there and 1v1 into that because they don't think that they're going to win. And um, for a hero that does percentage-based damage, typically you won't. Deathwing stays in the air and lands on Kel'Thuzad combo. That'd be actually pretty cool. How you doing, Elasia? Thanks for coming by. To be fair, neither team has wave clear. Uh, mm-hmm. Lenara does damage to to minions. Uh, she did actually go into Nature's Calling a level uh, four as well, so that's going to give her the increased damage for Wave Clear. So maybe that's, that's what they're looking for. Uh, they do have the Death and Decay from the Kel'Thuzad, so that's going to offer a little bit. But even then, you're going to be looking to try and utilize the majority of Kel'Thuzad's abilities for for damage on enemy heroes rather than Wave Clear. At least that's what you'd be hoping for. Due to the fact that uh, Death and Decay doesn't give you stacks of Master of the Cold Dark, but you have the Frost Nova that does, and you also have these chains that you keep seeing going out from Kel'Thuzad. Currently sitting at 11 out of the 30 stacks necessary, but they're approaching that Glacial Spike, which is going to allow them to not have to actually chain to another hero 
they're going to be able to chain to the Glacial Spike and then to a hero or vice versa. And that way they can pull them in and look for those single target blowups. Because I think that's going to be a lot of the play right now is going to be single target blowups into this enemy team. As Skig is going to be stepping up onto EKB. They're going to try and kite them towards Jacko Pop. I think they see that they're going for that turn in. So they're not going to be pulling in there because they don't want the Anubarak to just burrow charge into their face. Mommy very close to getting hit with the Arcane Orb from Key for You. I'm just going to be throwing those from a distance. Um, they did go into Nerubian Armor. I think I said it right. So they're gonna be able to get that spell armor uh, from the Hardened Carapace, which is, I believe, their W ability. So it's gonna be that shielding that you see every so often pop up around them. <laughs> it's a perfect emote shot. Perfect emote. Jacko Pop gonna be getting hit with right there, and you can actually see there's the sex sixty spell sexty uh, sixty spell armor that was right next to their icon. But this will be first web weaver turn in phase coming out in favor for the members of uh, Skiggly Wiggly. So they're gonna be trying to push this on in. Uh, neither team, as actually literally noted by 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 chat, don't have the best wave clear as Keldazad gets popped in top lane. No ma uh, uh, flactory stacks coming out from them, so they're not going to be able to get the insta buyback. I believe it's fifteen stacks. We were just hovered over at twelve stacks onto that one. Anubra getting very low here. You do not want to be uh, losing. Too many members here during your web weaver phase because that means you're not going to be able to capitalize on any of the pressure put into the lanes because look at top lane this is so far back this will get zero to little value lunara trying to push up mid lane a little bit faster trying to get some extra damage in as well bottom lane we're going to be peeking at this one as ekb is trying to be aggressive into skig and you can see that these auto attacks into skig are not something to just bat your eye at but now ekb being baited a little bit right there a new Brack tries to burrow charge forward unfortunately they're going to be able to get right behind that gate and they're going to be fine for now as the web weaver in bottom lane does end and as I was saying, you're not going to get a whole lot of value from this Web Weaver phase, especially because of the uh, staggered death right at the beginning from Red Rook Lord. The 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 non-existent threat, or the the no threat from there being the Kalthaz, or excuse me, the removing Kalthazad from the from the. I can't think of words this evening. Sorry, I was, I was just thinking about how they're poking at this, but either way, just removing the Keldazad right before the actual objective phase allowed them to be able to be more aggressive consistently because they didn't have to worry about Keldazad throwing out chains, stacking up their mass with the cold dark, all that good stuff. There we go. Figured out how to say it, but uh, Red Web Weavers will be descending. Lunara is going to be on this camp, and this is the reason Malthio's rotating so quickly down here is because they can see that they're on this. Mommy's going to be down here as well, and EKB, yeah, they got 22 gems. They're not considering that, but Red Web Weavers will be coming through. Deathwing did use the Cataclysm right there. No 10 talent here on either side just yet, so not going to be able to see if, uh, not going to be able to get that reset onto it by taking down a fort, but either way, they are on the defensive path right now as we can cycle through the other numbers once again. Going to be using that Dragon Breath to try and push back the wave a little bit here, but top lane will be what they're trying to prioritize, and this is due to the fact that Boss lane is often up, is is up here right above it. It's actually this pit above us. Deathwing gets picked off. That's a res reset for Li Ming. So typically you see a lot of teams grab the boss plus the um, the web weaver turn in, and then you, they try and end through top lane. Members of party time are going to be stepping up further, as that will be Jackal Pop proking their. Uh, Ooh, oh, the Stormbolt just narrowly missing as they actually get a couple stacks from the Kel'Thuzad as they're chasing into this Red Rook Lord. So very low, doesn't go down, but they turn around and say, you know what, this is going to be our keep for us as uh, Commandeer Odin was grabbed by the Tychus. I was curious to see what they were going to be grabbing as the Skyfall is going to be coming out. For, oh, Red Rook Lord is just trying to get a couple more of the stacks as they are. Oh, it's not going to show us. Of course, it. why would it show us all the stacks that we need to see? There we go. We'll take a peek at it in a second. Um... Sexty, yes. <laughs> I love how Buttspot jumped in there. Jackopot's gonna get, is gonna get uh, picked off right there from the disintegrate from Li Ming. Actually, I think it might have been was it last rights. No, it's it's not a cooldown just yet. Uh, the Ana's gonna get traded out. So this will be leaping strikes coming out from Lunar. Murden does dwarf, does the dwarf toss toss over to the opposing side and does get their uh, does get their. I can't think of words tonight. Avatar form. I don't know why. We're firing on like two cylinders this evening. Uh, Moist Winners, thank you for the 69 bits. Also, Ektar, thank you for approving sexty as a word in our channel. Because yes, it is It is very sexy spell armor. 
<laughs> Hong Fu, yes, I agree. Need some sexy spell armor. Chains go up, but they don't connect as uh, they're actually only three stacks away from finishing out the Master of the Cold Dark. They were trying to go for back to back turn ins, but they're going to be forced back right there as Mosh is going to get one Leaping Strike onto Bishop Miss. But where, did they come way too far out for this? Last Rates connects, and that will be the Lunar going down. Unfortunately, the Web Wrap will be just a touch too late, so they're not going to be able to get any sort of value from that one as that just kind of slowed them down. And uh, Chess Clue is still stepping up and throwing Storm Bolts into the face of Jacko Pop as we also do have Key for You trying to get a combo onto them. Merton going to be dwarf tossing over here. Uh, Merton won't have the turn in, but key for you helping out should have enough between the two of them. Yes, key for you only needs to turn in four more. Oh my god, Moist Venus, thank you for gifting a uh, sub to Snag as well as to Zultos. You alright, Baja? It's it, I, my brain. I don't know what. I, 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 like, the sentence is there in my head, and then I go to say, and it's just like, nah, you're, you're good. We're warming up. We're warming up. But thanks thanks for caring. Jackalpop is going to be taking a lot of damage right there. New Brack will be getting picked up. That's going to be the Shadow Fissure coming out from Kael'thuzad. Leaping Strikes going onto EKB, who somehow is trying to live through all this. Actually, just stealing health seems to be working out for them as they find the kill onto Lunara. The Holy Word Salvation is going to be a touch too late as the Shadow Fissure comes out. Doesn't get the kill, but we do still get the kill onto the Kael'thuzad. And uh, Red Wobbers will descend after all of that, too. So you just lost four members. You got a pick onto one, and now you have Red Wobbers crashing into your bottom mid and top now granted these are pretty stacked back top lane is going to be kind of just in the middle of the map mid lane is going to be up on that fort and then we're going to be having bottom lane a little bit uh actually step was going to be a little bit further forward but it seems this way due to the fact that well there's more structure for it to actually push through top lane actually got a little bit of help from malfiel gonna have them rotate over here can we actually show yeah we're on we're on the vision for uh for Sealy man right now just to just to kind of show what the red team is seeing and how their positioning is going to be working out here because this is this is always an interesting factor of how they're going to be responding to what information they're currently seeing on the map from the opposing side as Li Ming actually blinks forward and they get the kill into Deathwing. is there going to be a response from the enemy side is the question or do they just go purely into the defensive posture seems like that's it as they can count four members in top lane uh, that's the rough go to pick up, to be losing your Deathwing right there. Now the Web Weaver phase does end, and the enemy team doesn't have enough gems for another turn in here. They only need another uh, caster math. They're gonna need. I was watching because it was slow. Gonna be going up. Nineteen more right now. <laughs> <laughs> the wind is choking. The uh, the finger guns is too perfect. Seriously though, thank you so much, Wienus, for the uh, for the two gifted subs, and thank you again for the 69 bits. I'll resend your alert once alerts when we get out of this game. Uh, but they are working their way up for another turn in phase. This would be their third one of the game. It goes up by five gems every single time. They're also going to be looking for that 16 talent here. Once they have that, they can actually play into the enemy team even more aggressive. And I say that as they're stepping up very far into the lane, but... Skyfall coming out. We do have Lunara throwing the Wisp up here just to get some vision. Um, not going into Sentinel Wisp. I'm not going to be needing to throw that into a bush to get the increased vision. They went to nat nature. Oh my god, natural perspective. So you actually have to hit enemies with uh, Nature's Toxin. Or just mark them with Nature's Toxin, which is just applying it by auto attacking onto them. Malthea survived there. I Seriously, that was wild. I can't believe that Malfiel survived because there was a lot of there were a lot of minions. There were a lot of uh, enemy heroes stacked around them, so they were able to s just smash W and and just live through all of that. But it seems like they're setting up for another fight mid lane. Unfortunately, the enemy team just hit 16 talents here, so they're, you're going to see them quickly start to back out of this one. I think they might have been considering it. Avatar form was up by Chess Clue. It's going to be down for the next 70 or so seconds. I think it's an extra 80 second cooldown on it overall. 90 seconds, excuse me. <laughs> oh, oh, and I'm going to get picked off right there. That's going to be Shadow Fissure coming out. That does give the reset because it did hit a hero. Cataclysm Kalatic coming through. Chess Clue taking a lot of damage. They don't have the Avatar form, so Lunar will Leaping Strike over to them. This is a lot of damage coming out onto Leaping, but they did get the reset onto Anduin as well as to Anubrak and to the Deathwing and to the Lunara as Tychus shredded right through them in the Commandeer Odin form. Now, they could be looking for a boss really, really quickly. They don't have Murden to anchor it, but I don't think they're going to really need that as they, they have enough damage to shred right through that. Ah, ooh. I was thinking they were going to go, they go boss turn in just because of the time that they have. Unless one of them tags it really quickly. They actually, no, they're going for it. Okay. So key for you is going to go ahead and grab this. They're going to tag the boss, which means this is actually what I was pointing out earlier when they knew Lunar was on the boss. So we're going to go ahead and take away the vision. So what happens on a map in a situation like this is the, the web weavers come into the, into the, 
are going to be spawned, and it despawns all of the camps. Now, this doesn't happen on every single map where there's an objective. It's, it's just some of them. Like, some, sometimes I think, like, Infernal Shrines, when the Punisher pops up, you still have all the camps. So that right there was a signifier because the fact that the Web Weavers were descending, and you could see that there was the the um, the boss still up and available for for uh, for capture. That means that they were on it, and they thought about invading, but once again, no 16 talent tier, and also there's going to be Web Weavers already descending in lanes. So they're going to be setting up for that defense, but right now, we're going to pull away the talents real quickly, as we do currently have this top lane siege coming in. Mid lane and bottom lane do have Web Weavers, but this is what they're looking to try and end the game through right now. That's going to be a combo coming out from Kyoto Zod. There's going to be Shadow Fissure underneath. The Cataclysm comes in from Deathwing, does pop the... Actually, I can't believe that no one went down right there. I was thinking that one would, but the last rights will be canceled out by the Holy Word Salvation. Deathwing going to be getting picked off right there as the resets are coming in for Li Ming as they're trying to find another one onto the Anduin gets the flash heal out in time. The enemy team then decides to say, you know what, we don't need Anduin to, to die here, we just need the core to go down as Chess Clue will be forcing back Masha a little bit. Kills out looking for a chain, does connect on to Malthiel, uses the self-cleanse get themselves out of there, but now Web Webweaver in mid lane already crashed through a keep and it looks like the members of Party Time will be taking game number two and they'll close out our first series of the evening in a 2-0 fashion. GG, well played.